Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamar Mohammed, CEO of Aspect Biosystems. Uh, thanks to the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine for the uh, opportunity to share our story uh, and to update you on the exciting progress we're making at Aspect in creating bioprinted uh, therapeutics. Oops, my slide. Actually, could we restart that? My slide deck is not moving. Yeah, no, not a problem. Not a problem. Let's figure out why. It's Can not... you use, yeah, I, you know. Uh, <laughs> to click on the actual thing here. Yeah. Did the keys do it? Oh, okay. Wait, let me just make sure that. Uh... Okay, I'm in. Uh, yeah, that works now. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, not a problem, not a problem. All right, cool, so I am uh, muted again. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tamar Mohammed, CEO of Aspect Biosystems. Uh, thanks very much to the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine for uh, the opportunity to share our story uh, and to update you on the exciting progress uh, we're making at Aspect Biosystems in creating bioprinted uh, therapeutics. So we're seeing a major paradigm shift in the way that we're thinking of drugs. And I don't think I need to convince this audience uh, that small molecules that were once seen as mainstream, uh, that is rapidly changing. And we're starting to see the market for biopharmaceuticals where the drug itself uh, is made of biological substances uh, like antibodies, uh, that market is rapidly expanding. Uh, and now I believe we're entering into the very exciting era of regenerative medicine, uh, where we're looking at cells, tissues, uh, and even organs as the next generation of therapeutics. Similarly, we're seeing a, a massive paradigm shift in the medical device world. Uh, medical devices are becoming uh, a lot more sophisticated uh, and even personalized and customized. Advanced manufacturing and 3D printing uh, is a big, big driver behind the shift. And so I ultimately see these paradigm shifts converging uh, to enable the next generation of therapeutics in the form of 3D bioprinted tissues. And so at Aspect, we're focused on this bioconvergence where we are marrying our microfluidic bioprinting technology uh, and manufacturing platform with advanced cell biology and biomaterials to create uh, what we're calling bioprinted therapeutics. So these are implantable cell-based therapeutics that we believe will unlock uh, the next generation of sophisticated cell therapies. Aspect was spun out of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. This was through a collaboration between world-class research groups in medicine and engineering. And since we left campus and started ramping up commercial operations in 2016, we've hit several key milestones as a company. We've assembled a truly world-class team with over 50 scientists, engineers, innovators, and entrepreneurs. Uh, we built a very strong intellectual property portfolio around our core uh, microfluidic bioprinting technology uh, and associated tissue applications with over 50 filings around the world. Uh, we've created strategic partnerships with some of the biggest names uh, in the industry on different applications of our technology. Uh, we're now focused on leveraging our platform to create our own proprietary pipeline of bioprinted therapeutics that we're advancing to the clinic. Uh, and uh, to support these developments and, and that growth, we brought in smart venture capital to fuel uh, our growth and development with over $50 million of capital uh, raised to date. At the very core of our technology uh, is our microfluidic bioprinting platform. Uh, so we're the first and only group in the world uh, to marry microfluidics with 3D printing technology, uh, allowing us to have very deep level uh, of micro scale control over the biology. So with our platform, we can integrate, uh, process, and print multiple different biomaterials uh, loaded with therapeutically relevant cells in real time to create living microscale fibers. So think of these cell-loaded fibers as the building blocks of our implantable cell therapies. These dispensed cell-loaded fibers are then directly patterned into 3D macroscale therapeutic devices. So using our advanced software design tools, uh, our machine vision and machine learning based uh, control systems, uh, we're able to rationally design uh, both the structure and composition and then directly manufacture uh, these bioprinted uh, therapeutics to meet functional requirements. One example of a bioprinted therapeutic platform uh, currently in development at Aspect uh, using our technology uh, targets indications where allogeneic cell encapsulation uh, is critical. 
using an immune protective outer shell shown in blue here, uh, we are working to enable long-term uh, allogeneic cell therapies without the need for patient immune suppression. We use advanced biomaterials that are perm selective, uh, which enables a sense and release function by the encapsulated therapeutic cells. And from a safety perspective, uh, we are developing this therapeutic platform as a retrievable implant. We believe that being able to retrieve a cellular device, uh, especially if it contains a stem cell source of therapeutic cells, uh, would reduce the risk of cells escaping from the device and forming uh, potential teratomas. From a customization and platform perspective, uh, one of the powers behind our bioprinting approach to cell therapy is that these uh, implantable devices are printed by design. So things like sizing and patterning of the macro device can be altered and customized to different therapeutic cell doses uh, or to encapsulate cells at lower or higher uh, densities to optimize the functionality depending on metabolic demands of the cells. Uh, device design in terms of the structure is also driven by surgical procedure and site of implantation. And so by using different cell types and applying uh, this technology to different applications uh, and, and indications, uh, our goal is to use this bioprinted therapeutic platform uh, to generate customized bioprinted therapeutics that could potentially address multiple different indications. Uh, so think of a single, uh, very powerful platform uh, that is targeting multiple different indications and applications. And so we're currently applying this uh, platform to several uh, indications, including uh, using our pancreatic tissues for type 1 diabetes, uh, as well as using our liver tissues uh, uh, to address acquired and genetic liver uh, disorders. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, uh, I'll focus on our pancreatic tissue program. So human islets have been demonstrated to be a clinically relevant cell therapy for type 1 diabetes. Uh, the Edmonton protocol that many are aware of uh, demonstrates the efficacy of primary islet cell therapy uh, in severe uncontrolled diabetics, but limited applicability due to the requirement uh, of long-term immune suppression with unencapsulated allogeneic cells. So we spent significant time optimizing the bioprinting viability and functionality primary islets in vitro. And the data that we're showing uh, today is from uh, in vivo studies uh, that is built off of this early work. Uh, so 3000 uh, islet equivalents uh, were uh, bioprinted and implanted into the interperitoneal uh, space of healthy uh, skid uh, C57 black six mice for 31 days. Uh, bioprinted tissues retrieved at 31 days demonstrate high viability confirmed via live dead stain and insulin content confirmed via dithazone staining. We see very good functionality as measured by glucose stimulated insulin secretion before and after uh, 31 days implantation. At 31 days before tissues were explanted, uh, blood levels of human C peptide uh, and glucose were measured at regular intervals for 60 minutes after an oral uh, bolus of glucose. And we see that C peptide increases rapidly in animals with bioprinted human islets uh, with a corresponding rise, then rapid drop in blood glucose. After demonstrating uh, that our bioprinted tissues are uh, indeed functional, uh, we followed up with studies uh, to examine uh, efficacy in a diabetic uh, disease model. And so here we demonstrate data from studies that involved implanting our bioprinted tissues in disease models uh, we triggered type 1 diabetes in these animals by exposure to uh, injected streptozozin at five days. Uh, blood glucose rises very quickly as the mouse uh, beta cells uh, die due to STZ injection. Bioprinted tissues containing 3,000 uh, IEQs uh, were implanted into the IP space at zero days, uh, and we see very rapid return to normal glycemia uh, by day 10. Return to normal glycemia is associated with a rise in blood levels of human C-peptide, uh, and we see that normal uh, glycemia uh, and C-peptide of over one nanograms per ml uh, is maintained for at least 60 days. Uh, to investigate in vivo function of our bioprinted islets in diabetic mice, uh, we performed high-resolution blood glucose measurements post-glucose uh, infusion at 32 days post-implantation, uh, and we demonstrated rapid uh, return to normal uh, blood glucose levels in animals with bioprinted islet tissues, uh, suggesting appropriate kinetics of insulin release from the implanted uh, tissues. 
Uh, through our studies, we confirmed that our bioprinted human eyelets uh, at 68 days post implantation uh, demonstrate high viability and improved functions. Uh, tissues retrieved from mice at 68 days post implantation show close to 100% uh, cell viability uh, and intense disadone staining, suggesting high insulin content. GSIS measurements of explanted tissues uh, demonstrate several key takeaways. The first is an eightfold increase uh, in their stimulation index compared to pre implantation. Uh, secondly, uh, we have a reduced variation in glucose stimulated insulin release in explanted tissues uh, versus tissues pre implantation. Uh, and finally, we see very low basal levels of insulin release and return to similar low baseline levels when glucose. Uh, is reduced, uh, which is a very good sign of islet health as stressed islets have higher basal levels uh, of insulin release. So we think uh, that a beta cell therapeutic that immune protects functional cells and can be used without systemic immune suppression could expand primary islet cell therapy to a much broader number of patients. Uh, however, we do uh, understand and acknowledge that there are uh, an estimated 1.5 million type 1 diabetics in the U.S. alone. Uh, so primary islet cell therapy is not going to scale to this many patients. Uh, so to address this, we're working with one of the most well-known groups led by Professor Tim Kiefer at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. Professor Kiefer was one of the first to develop a multi-stage protocol to differentiate embryonic stem cells into pancreatic islet cells. Uh, we've bioprinted with stem cell derived uh, cells at stage six, almost at the very final stages of differentiation, but not yet capable of releasing insulin. Uh, and after seven days in culture, uh, post printing, GSIS shows bioprinted uh, stem cell islets have become functional, suggesting that bioprinted uh, tissues in that environment uh, that's capable of supporting the final stages of beta cell differentiation. Uh, stem cell islets uh, implanted into immune deficient mice are viable uh, and arise uh, in circulating human C peptide levels in animals uh, with stem cell islet tissues uh, for over 50 days shows uh, the stem cell islets are maturing uh, into functional insulin producing cells uh, in vivo, which is uh, incredibly exciting to see. So uh, taking a step back and zooming back uh, out to the big picture, uh, at Aspect, we're focused on marrying our microfluidic bioprinting technology uh, and manufacturing platform with therapeutic cells and fit for purpose biomaterials. Uh, so we're able to directly manufacture uh, implantable cell-based bioprinted therapeutics. These bioprinted therapeutics are rationally designed with functional biology, uh, but also the necessary architectural and mechanical integrity. And so here we're showing our bioprinted therapeutics are easily handled and subsequently implanted into the omentum of a pig uh, for evaluation as we enter into later stages uh, of preclinical development. So lastly, uh, I'd like to acknowledge our uh, amazing team at Aspect. Uh, it's easy for me uh, to share all of these exciting updates, but it's uh, really through their efforts and their phenomenal progress here in building bioprinted therapeutics that will have a big impact on uh, clinical care and patients that, uh, that we're able to, uh, to show all of this great work. Uh, and I would also like to thank uh, and acknowledge uh, our many partners around the world uh, that are aligned around our common vision uh, of using our deep technology platform to create cutting edge bioprinted uh, cell therapies uh, that we believe will take us into an exciting new era of regenerative medicine where we're uh, unlocking the true power behind cell therapy through this increased level of sophistication uh, and, and application of, uh, of technology. Uh, so thanks very much uh, to listening to uh, our updates. Uh, I look forward to connecting throughout the, uh, the meeting. Uh, and I also look forward to sharing more news uh, on our progress in the coming period as we advance our bioprinted therapeutics uh, and hope to uh, share some of that progress uh, very soon, uh, hopefully in person at upcoming meetings. Thank you very much.